Rottweiler Vlogs, episode 115. It's your boys, Miz and One Mac, back with some more dope content. This time, we on the west side of ATL with my man Vincent John from Bark Canines and Primetime Canines. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the video. Peace. I'm with Primetime Canine out of Atlanta, Georgia, originally from California, uh, Bay Area, Richmond to be exact. Went to Salesian High School, um, graduated high school, transferred out here to Tuskegee University, uh, majoring in animal science, uh, minor in microbiology, did some behavioral studies with Emory University. Um, been working with dogs all my life. Um, my first dog was a Roddy, so I'm, I'm really passionate about that. I'm passionate about all dogs, but um, we'll get more into it in a minute. Uh, Vincent Bennett, I'm with Bark K9. Uh, I am born here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, raised in Philadelphia, where I got a lot of my background in training and veterinary medicine. I um, recently moved back here to Atlanta and been able to help a lot of these people who are riding enthusiasts here. Tell me your Rottweiler story. All right, well, date back a while ago when I was eight years old. Um, my father's a landscaper, worked on um, houses and buildings and fences and stuff like that, grass and all that, which I work with him every weekend. Uh, he had a client that uh, was a breeder. She had German Rottweilers, I was eight years old. And uh, she reached out to my dad, wanted to get her fence fixed and a kennel built. Uh, went in the backyard and just saw these massive, beautiful black, brown dogs that was just like everything to me. I was a dog lover at, at first anyway, so that was just like crazy. And uh, me being me, <laughs> I went and opened one of the cages, <laughs> let the dog out. The owner, you know, kind of spazzed out. Was like, no, no, he's a little vicious. The dog came right up to me, <laughs> sat down and gave me, you know, I just hugged on him and played with him. She was like, I've never seen that before. I mean, you know, I've been a dog person all my life, um, but I fell in love with that dog. I told my dad I wanted one. And, you know, being a father, he was one to teach me, you know, morals. So he was like, you help me build this fence and you save your money, you can buy one from her. So I bought, I bought one a year later at nine years old. I paid, I paid 2,500, so I saved all my coins. And um, his name was Max, uh, Maximilian. Um, big, he was a big boy, you know, he was huge. He went everywhere with me and my dad, um, loved him to death. Um, he got older and, you know, he passed. But um, I've always, like, that was my first encounter with a dog dog. Like, you know, just the aggressiveness, the, the, the calmness the sweetness, the loyalty, the stubbornness that they have. Like, I mean, I'm built kind of like that. You know what I mean? Being a man in America, um, fits my personality. But I, I, I love those dogs. Those dogs are beautiful dogs. So with that, I had him for 10 years. Um, came to high school with me and all that, you know, hung out, you know, to the games and stuff, football games. But um, that was my story. It's simple, but it's a big impact on my life as being a dog person and then falling in love with the Roddies. And uh, ever since then, I always had a soft spot for them. Um, I know a lot about them, so I have a lot of experience with them. So yeah, that's pretty much. My first encounter with Roddy, whew, that would have been Venus. Venus, Venus was about three years old when I met her. She was running with a pack of Akitas, 30 of them. And the gentleman who introduced me to the dog game, one of my mentors, Tom Walker, um, he, he had her and he got her from a rehab rehome situation. People got a Roddy, most people do, didn't know what they were getting themselves into, but the girl was smart, smart as a tech, which is what most people don't anticipate. They see the size, they see the color, they hear the stories, and generally they're either looking for a protection or a guardian, or they've had the breed before, but anybody stepping into it generally doesn't realize how smart they were. So Venus got herself evicted from her first home for being an escape artist. You know, mom, dad, get ready to leave from work. You know, she's hopping the fence, she's breaking out the crate, she's throwing Whatever. and then it became a little bit of a compulsive behavior where she was going to do damage to herself or the neighbors were complaining but she made it to this pack of 30 dogs which Akitas are tough dogs it's a pretty tough breed um, this Roddy ran with them and she did really awesome and then even on a one-on-one -on -one individual basis she was the first dog out of all of the dogs I saw that actually had 
a true willingness to obey, but then also the intelligence to follow it up. So I mean, first dog I've seen moving off leash, first dog I've seen actually, you know, decent recall and then natural protective nature. My mentor at the time, he wasn't doing protection dogs like we're heavy into today. He was just, you know, rehabbing, rehoming, kind of pulling a Caesar Milan deal. So, uh, you know, it was definitely dope me and Venus, um, you know, but throughout all that time there, you know, I was working in the vet hospital. So I definitely have my fair share of experience with the puppies, with the adult dogs, the unfortunate medical conditions that are just running rapid, the osteosarcoma, the cardiomyopathy, things like that. So, you know, seeing dogs in different stages, especially the Rottweiler um, through life, I can say consistently, the people who own them, the people who love them, it's for what the breed consistently brings to the table. And that is definitely, you know, the uh, the guardian factor. You definitely get the intelligence. And then it's one of the most classic breeds, obviously, guys, you know, um, you know, sprouting out of Germany, making it over here to the U.S. and still holding strong. So I definitely enjoy the breed, but my first encounter was with a girl named Venus. A friend of mine introduced me to a client. Um, he was looking for a Rottweiler. Um, I love Rottweiler, so I was like, all right, we can, you know, find one. Um, one day he came to the house, I was like, I got one. I was like, okay. And so, you know, um, from a training standpoint, I like to test dogs out, puppies, and match the personality with the owner. I think that's very important for breeders to do that. Um, I do that myself. Um, so he just handed me this dog, and he was like, you know, oh, this is what I wanted. He wanted um, protection work, pretty much is all he cared about was a dog that protects him and his family in his business. Um, I was like, well, you know, I don't basically corner a dog into what one stigma as, you know, because they are, you know, can be aggressive. They also are intelligent. They also are sweet. So I wanted to get him the total package. Um, Draco is a certified service dog. Um, I take him to Veterans Hospital and let him hang out with veterans and um, support them. Um, I also uh, work with different organizations for stroke victims. So I use that as a foundation. Because he's a big dog, he's tall, um, they can use their hands, they don't have hand locomotion. We use that as a sensor. So when they, when I try to teach them how to pet the dog, they can't move their hand. They have a, a situation where they have to work on trying to use their hand to pet the dog. So the end goal is to pet the dog. And I think that, you know, when the dog's trying to help them pet and, and licking them and giving them stimuli, it's not just a situation where you go to the therapist and, they, and you do a therapy and then you go home, you're still kind of down, you still get a stimulation of a dog. Um, Rottweilers are huge and excellent for that. Um, the temperament is, is, is beautiful for that. They, they're loving dogs. Like, I mean, you socialize them, they can be whatever you want. So I made him that as well, as well as a protection dog. But I more engaged into service work, helping out people in general, because that's what they're here for. That's why we have dogs, to help us out, to love on us, to keep us healthy, to keep us stimulated. And because they're so intelligent and learning and they want to please, the difference between a lot of breeds are these dogs really want to please. They want to be with people and help out. Um, I trained him to be all he can be. And he showed me that he can be a service dog. Um, he showed me he can be a protection dog. He showed me how active he really is. He's a, he, doesn't, he doesn't even walk. He, he'll probably just run and trot. We'll do a video on him. Um, but uh, fell in love with him. He's, he's a good boy. I have to share him, unfortunately. But um, he, he does his purpose. He serves his purpose. His family loves him to death. They treat him like a big kid. Um, but coming from training him from a puppy to now, I mean, I loved every bit of it. There was hard times for him understanding. There's hard times for me understanding him. Um, as a trainer, I don't go in just training a dog. I learn their personality. I learn how, how they respond to certain things. I learn what they like to do. Um, he loves to look at me and, 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 and say, you know, am I doing good? Yeah, and I give him that praise. You'll see the interaction between me and him. You'll see the love. I mean, you can't do nothing but love this breed because that's all they ask for. Um, I love that they want to be loved and want to love back. Um, every dog has their own personality. Um, Draco has his own personality, which is uh, it, it's very like uh, all over the place. And then you settle him down and then he can focus on you. You know what I mean? He'll focus on what's going on. But you put him to it, he'll work. That's what I love about this breed. They work. I can do 20 clients and he's like, what's next? I'm like, no, bro, we're going home. I'm like, let's go home and lay down and relax. He's like, no, I want to work some more. I love that about Roddy. They want to work. And they're working dogs. So that's my experience with them. I've never had the pleasure of actually owning a Rottweiler yet. I think it is in the works somewhere in the future because I can appreciate almost all the original working breeds, which the Rottweiler is definitely one of them. Um, I will say though, recently there's been a spur 
I say like late 90s, or sorry, late 80s, early 90s, I remember there being a big spur of Roddy's. You know, if you remember the movie New Jack City, he had one tied to the table in there. I mean, that boy was sharp. And so everybody wanted a Roddy if they didn't have a pit bull. And so uh, my background is much different than most trainers. You know, um, I help dope boys with their dogs and I help people who are gonna have a dog watching the house. And um, you know, everybody wanted the biggest and baddest dog. And I remember for a while it was the Roddy. And when it stemmed away from that, and as I got into veterinary medicine and I started to see, you know, different sides of the coin, not just the protective nature, but a lot of what John was speaking, uh, volume two, the dogs, you know, intelligence and loyalty, and then of course, affectionate nature, which you generally don't see if you don't own the dog, you know, they show that to their people, not, you know, to the opposition. So I could definitely see where, you know, anybody who's had one is definitely gonna get another. Uh, as far as training them, you know, I, I actually made a comment to John and another trainer this year that I wanna charge more for training Roddy's. And not because they're popular and everybody has them, but man, the intelligence level matched with the dramatics. And dramatics, I should just really use the word characteristics. Um, you know, they're characteristic traits. Each one of them is different. You know, if they're going to be hard headed, they're going to be hard headed. You know, some of them will give you a sit, and then if you got to take it, you know, it's an alligator roll and into this and that. And they really know how to play on the owner's emotions and the trainer's emotions, and they really know how to get out of the work they don't want to do. Uh, so I can say that, you know, when I originally came into the breed I didn't have to train them yet you know I was just getting to enjoy, enjoy them from afar or help people get them to where they wanted them to be and then um, as time went on I ran into a great kennel called Kimbertall back in uh, Pennsylvania Kimbertall kennels they had been importing Dobermans and Rottweilers for over 20 30 years by the time I had gotten to him he started out with Felas so when he had started getting to the Roddies and the Dobies one thing I noticed about the Rottweilers that he was bringing in um, and the imports versus a lot of the dogs I was seen here being bred in the US was the um, the intensity in Germany <laughs> they don't care so much about cosmetics sometimes it's a little bit more about attitude so we go down the line of dogs and you got this one real tight skin real big head you got this one it's real loose hound looking but he's supposed to be the nastiest guy and then you got this one and it's like, uh, they're telling me he's their best stud, he's their best producer. And so each dog, you know, played their own different role. And what I got to see about the breed in general is, is that you can get what you want. You know, believe it or not, there's a higher drive, you know, dog and Roddy. There's a there's a more pet style Roddy, uh, more show Roddy. They definitely do have their own categories within the breed. So as I'm, you know, still growing in the breeze, still learning a little bit more, you know, the mentors and the dogs that I've dealt with um, and the people that I've been around, I've had almost all great experiences, but trust me guys, when it's bad, it's bad. So, you know, be conscious of that as well, you know, just, you know, do your research on your breeder, do your research on your genetics, do your research on, you know, even your homeowners association, your living situation, because I find that, you know, people get these dogs and then it's like, oh man, you know, how much you gotta feed them, everything. You know, it all goes in hand in hand, but I would definitely say that, you know, my love for the breed is uh, still growing. Uh, I do see myself definitely owning one. I do see them to be one of the best classic working breeds that um, did exist. Uh, so, you know, as time goes on, I, I definitely see myself with one. Tell me, what is a dog man to you? What's a dog man? <laughs> um, this is just my opinion. Uh, I believe a dog man is a person that would do whatever it takes to take care of their dogs. Um, I think that a dog man is knowledgeable about their dogs or the breed or what they have at home. Um, someone that cares and researches and, and, and enjoys it. Um, I meet, I can understand a person's dog man as soon as we start talking. The passion behind it, um, the relationship that you build. Uh, I've met these two guys through dogs. Like, literally, we were progressing you know, one phone call to meeting each other, to hanging out, to doing business, to figuring things out, and bouncing information off. Um, he praises my dog, I praises his dog. Um, if there's no judgment, you know, we just here to help each other out and love our dogs. I think the characteristic of a dog man is someone who just shows that he loves his dog and he will do whatever it takes to take care of his dogs and his, his, his puppies or whatever he wants to do. I mean. You, you just, it's a feeling though, you know what I mean? I could tell these guys, I could talk to these guys all day about dogs. You know what I mean? Like literally, we just talk about dogs. I, I mean, we can talk about personal things and stuff like that and, you know, business, but we all end up back at a dog person, dog thing. So, um, yeah, I think that's what dog person is. It's from a dog, person that takes care of the dog very well. My definition of a dog man is a little bit different than John's. <laughs> 
Dog man is a raw man. Um, dog man versus a pet owner is two different things to me. Um, a dog man, that's just your lifestyle. And I'm gonna tell you right now, as a dog man, and some people will attest to this, I don't go on vacation. Who taking care of my pet? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't, I sacrifice things that most common people won't. You know, I'm gonna make sure the deep freezer's full of raw food for my dog, but for my freezer full, I'll eat ramen. You know, so very much like John said, just, you know, kind of picking and choosing. And then also, just your mentality about the dog. Uh, for me personally, and for most people that I know, you know, I get to a primitive state. Like, I try to make sure that they still are fulfilled in who they are. First, being an animal, you know, a dog. And then second, whatever specific breed they are, you know, breaking it down that they're still getting that full fulfillment. You know, if I got staffy bulls, I'm hanging them on a spring pole, I'm working them on a flirt pole, I'm running them on a treadmill. If I got a hound, I'm tracking him. Um, you know, and if I got a Roddy and he wants to do bite work or Schutzen or whatever the case may be, agility, that I'm working that dog and fulfilling him in his purpose. So I think a dog man doesn't just enjoy having a pet or, you know, a four-legged companion around. He likes the full nature of the dog. He likes the beast side, he likes the love side, he likes the, you know, the good times and the hard times, you know, and he's through experience. And that's the second thing that really makes a dog man's experience, you know, not just the fact that you got a genuine, true love for dogs, but then the experience behind it, because with the experience behind it, then you're actually able to have an impact outside of your pack which that to me is a true dog, man, you know, to be able to give that information. I do my own vaccines, you know, I go ahead and whelp my own litters, you know, all that comes with time and experience. You know, not a lot of people just hop right in and know how to do those things. It's, you know, am I willing to take the time or even the risk? That's a risk sometimes whelping your own litter. But if you take the time and you go through the experience and you know what mastitis is now, or you know what a dystocia is now, or you know um, when your bitch may need a C-section, or is even in labor, you know, that's all things that come with experience so to me a dog man is somebody who has genuine love for what they're doing with these dogs has genuine love for what the dog wants to do and then second also has the experience paired with it after that i mean everything is just it's, it's bliss it's pure bliss primetime canine is a family uh business uh i train for the families um i train dogs to be obeyed in the family understand how to uh work in the family environment in uh in the real world uh, we ask these dogs to become a little humanized, so we have to give them the tools, and I think Primetime Canine has been built on that, giving them the tools to be able to be in a family or in the environment of the real world and act accordingly and be safe. I think it's very important to uh, Primetime Canine. Um, we have 14 employees. Um, we do all dogs. Uh, we specialize in service work, therapy, emotional support. Part Canine, I started my company in 2008 officially you know I've been working with dogs since 11 but I'm um, professionally training um, here in Atlanta for the last two years um, and I'm glad that I made it here a uh, big portion of what I like to do with and for my company and the, you know, what we offer to my clients is um, advocating advocating for the dogs um, you know they don't have a voice so my years of experience I use to teach owners about their new breeds um, about their new dog choices and then about uh, decisions they're making with their dogs you know so that I feel like that's a big portion of what Bark Canine does we advocate for the dog and then we're able to inform the client um, and then make sure that they're going on the right track make sure that everything um, you know works both for the dog and the owner hand in hand because sometimes people get a dog that isn't for the job that they necessarily want and it can be you know, a bad on it, lead that person to have a negative experience with that one dog that they want to do that one thing. And then that leads down to just, you know, negativity. So Bar K9 is here to educate, advocate. And then the next thing is just definitely enjoy ourselves. You know, this is what I love to do. So the fact that I get to do it now, day in and day out, full time, you know, for myself, for my family, um, you know, is definitely dope. Uh, you know, our slogan is morphing man's best friend. And so that's just us understanding that, you know, there's stages and levels to all of this, you know, from training to, you know, having that dog as a companion and a pet. And we break that down. You know, one of the biggest things I'm always telling my clients is it's an animal first, a dog second, and a pet third. So I train them and treat them in that way. And once you understand them and train them and treat them in that way, the dog is so much more fulfilled so again bar k9 that's what we do we morph man's best friend hey this is john primetime k9 here with draco he's american roddy um working line he's more of a working line roddy uh draco uh he's a year and eight months he has went through puppy imprinting beginner intermediate advanced obedience and then protection one and two so we're going to show you his on-leash obedience his off-leash obedience and his protection work 
and then show you a couple of little tactical tricks that he knows how to do um, in certain situations. Heel. So, heel. Heel. Good boy. Down. Stay. Heel. No. Very active. Heel. Sit. Heel. Heel. Back up. Back up. Back up. So, protection wise, you want to back up from somebody, you have a gun, you can back up with your dog. Back up. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. <laughs> Sit. Down. Stay. In. Somebody behind you. You got somebody in front of you. You're trying to figure out what's going on in a fake situation. You got to take the back. I'm turning with my legs. Down. Stay. Come. Side. Sit. This again. No, sit. Stay. Side. That's what he likes to do. I mean, he's a working dog. I like it. You just gotta be prepared for it. All right, a little off leash. There's no, no choke, no, no uh, e collar, none of that. Heel. Heel. No, heel. Good boy, heel. Good boy. Uh -uh. You also know sign language? No, down, stay. The sign language is too much noise. You can't understand what's going on. There go. having some fun, showing his obedience. I'm letting him just play. I'm not trying to do it crisp. I just want him to have a good time and enjoy this. Um, it's all a game for him. Come. Stop. Stop. Sit. Sit. Stay. Down. Come. Stop. Down. All right, now we're gonna do some protection work. Stay. Come. Sit. These harnesses, so they have a good range. We're gonna turn them on now. Deterring the guys from coming to you, standing in front of you. Level two, we're gonna give him a bite. Let me teach him first. Oh, good boy. Good boy, work. Good boy, Jacob. Good boy. 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 
Fui! Come! No! Come! No! Come! Heel. Sit. Good boy. So, a little protection work. Just want to show you that he will work. And uh, he'll, he loves it. One thing I love about the Brie, they love the work. As you can see, he's a handful. He's a lot. You have to be patient and know where his triggers are. So, with that being said, if you want a Roddy, please, please get him trained. Do some kind of training, some kind of, they need it. They love it, they want it. You know what I mean? But, he's a good boy. I love his, I love him, man. They're good dogs.